Number 10. Writing Disturbing Fiction It wouldn't be hard to believe that writing disturbing fiction might get you in trouble in certain dictatorships around the world, but the state of Illinois, in the United States of America, the country that has auto-proclaimed itself the greatest democracy on the planet? Yep, and apparently, Illinois is not the only state where you could face 30 days in jail and up to $1,500 in fines. Are you wondering what they mean by disturbing? Fiction that disturbs the person who reads it, even if you wrote it for your eyes only and it isn't published. Can you imagine how much trouble authors the likes of the late Edgar Allan Poe, chill master Stephen King, True Blood's Charlene Harris could get into? Wow, what a way to celebrate the First Amendment and freedom of speech, guys. I mean, really. Number 9. Possession of a Permanent Marker how do you like this one? In a few states in the U.S., including the major state of California, it's illegal for a minor to buy a permanent marker, but it is legal to buy marijuana if you have a prescription. When they passed this law, the reason was they wanted to prevent and curb graffiti, right? They wouldn't actually arrest anybody, would they? Well, a 13-year-old in Oklahoma who wrote on his desk in permanent marker would beg to differ because he was taken into custody for having one on him. But George Zimmerman went free in Florida for killing teenager Trayvon Martin because his gun wasn't owned illegally. Legally. Number 8. Friendly Bets so many people place friendly bets on their favorite sports teams winning their next game, especially during the NBA playoffs, the World Series, or the Super Bowl, right? And what about the World Cup? People go nuts! Well, if more than $2,000 are involved in a single day, you could be arrested. In 1970, the Illegal Gambling Act was passed, and that says that any gambling that violates state or local law involves five people or more and adds up to 2000 bucks or more in a single day can get you up to 10 years in prison. In a crazy story out of a gangster movie, Sal Colosi got into some major trouble in 2005 when a cop overheard him making bets with his pals at a bar. The cop got chummy with Colosi and encouraged the betting over a few months. Until one day, Colosi went over the $2,000 line. That night, the SWAT team hit Colosi's home to arrest him, but one of the men in blue just shot him in the heart as soon as he opened the door and Colosi died. You don't believe me? You want to bet? Number 7. VPN and IP Address Loopholes if you're in another country and you get the urge to binge on Netflix, you might be tempted to play around with your VPN and make it look like your IP address is back in your native country. But that's illegal. It's also technically illegal to pretend you're in one country when you're in another. But it's not illegal to be a multinational conglomerate that outsources to foreign countries and tries to make you believe that their service representatives are not in India, the Philippines, or Bataan. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm speaking to Jerry. Mm-hmm. Good one. Number 6. Leaving Your Teenager at Home, Alone Remember the movie Home Alone? Macaulay Culkin was really young when his parents forgot him at home in that smash comedy. And when you think about it, what they did was really criminal. But the laws determining how old children have to be to stay at home alone vary a lot from one state to the next. Some states have no law, and others issue recommendations without legislating per se, but others really go all out. For example, in Illinois, leaving your 13-year-old at home alone is cause for legal action and could even result in having the parents thrown in jail. At the other end of the spectrum, Spectrum, Kansas will allow you to leave your six-year-old alone at home. Let's hope for his sake he's as clever as the kid in the movie. Wow! Number 5. Cursing on a Bus can you imagine getting a $500 ticket for using the F word in a casual conversation while riding a public transit bus? That's exactly what happened to Terry Duncan in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was just chatting away, minding his own business, when an undercover cop cited him for swearing on the city bus. The violation is considered disorderly conduct, believe it or not. And oddly enough, at least seven other states have similar laws. Duncan, of course, said it was un-American to be cited for that since he wasn't cursing at anybody. But the Milwaukee County Sheriff, David Clark, said they had a zero tolerance policy regarding disorderly conduct on buses, which he considers a quality of life issue. This happened six years ago. I'm wondering what the people protesting against police brutality would say about that zero tolerance policy today. Number 4. Using a fake name on the internet. If you've ever made up a username for a Facebook account for Xbox Live or to access Mistress G's bad boy network, you've committed a federal felony. I'm not judging you, just stating a fact. I know it's ridiculous to expect you to give your real name and real info when logging on to some embarrassing site, and everybody knows it won't matter because you're not going to use false credit card numbers or hack into the government's secret database or Hillary Clinton's high security emails. But still, just by using fake names on the internet, according to the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, you can 
could be arrested and charged with the federal crime of hacking. Now you know. Number 3. Working remotely on a travel visa Have you ever heard of this? Do you even know what it means? It's definitely pretty murky territory, that's for sure. Working remotely on a travel visa could be as silly as checking your work email while you're on vacation in another country. So for example, if you're vacationing in the United Kingdom and you decide to write a letter for work or check in on a project you're developing for your employer back in the States, you'd be considered working illegally in the UK because you're getting paid back in the US but working abroad. Crazy? Right. Got it? Good. Number 2. Sharing Subscription Passwords This one is kind of obvious, but hey, a lot of people have no idea what copyright infringement means, so maybe you don't know that it's illegal to share, say, your Netflix password so that somebody else can use it. You might think, bah, they're rich, who cares? Well, they actually do care, and you actually can get in trouble, because it's wrong, people. But it seems one third of subscribers to services like HBO Go and Netflix have admitted sharing their passwords. What's interesting is that a survey has shown that password sharing has also helped attract new customers because once they've used the shared password, people get hooked and eventually join legally. Huh? What? Really? Number 1. Connecting to Unsecure Wi-Fi Networks Next time you decide to log on to the Wi-Fi network from the cafe across the street, beware. Although public networks are supposed to be free, they're also supposed to be for customers. So technically, what you're doing is illegal. And you know that everything you do on the internet can be monitored, right? Yeah, so watch out for the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, because it applies to wireless routers too. 